performances here for you. So I'm actually going to turn the stage over to Irina here. Who's I have one extra song. Oh, oh, a couple. Okay. No, just one. Oh, just one. One extra song. Okay. You can tell I'm prepared. Um, <laughs> so, do you want me to announce what the song is? Or do you want to no, I'm sure they will recognize it. Okay. I hope that you enjoy. Please give a, round, a warm round of applause for Irina. Oh. 
there's musical live acts from Maga, all that stuff. Um, just for a show of hands, which I'd like to know, which is your favorite media or medium of it? So, who here likes the manga over everything else? Woo! Right. How about the anime? Woo! It was a little campy at first, and it got really good towards the end, I think. And the musical, some of the people, I guess, will be. Okay. <laughs> I know, either then, you've got to go and see a musical, or two, twice in Japan. I'm, I'm very jealous. <laughs> very envious. Um, actually, I should show these. I brought them, so I don't know how well you'll be able to see them. These are from my collection. These are what the musicals look like. $60 a tape. <laughs> I believe. Uh, they did two a year. Um, they did a hiatus after 2005, which they're currently still on. So uh, I haven't heard anything yet, but I'm really, really hoping that they bring it back now that the new series is supposed to be coming out. So um, how many of you are just insanely excited about the new series? Okay, let us start with... Oh, okay, I have to do this one first. 
Did, yeah, how many of you have heard of the original? What they were gonna do before they made the winning This is the only video that exists of it, as far as we know. Yeah. Um, it was done at a convention before Sailor Moon was even thought about being dubbed into English. This is what we were going to get before um, they did the anime dub. So yeah, go up there. Yeah, should be starting up here. So I'm sorry about the video quality and the sound, but again, this was somebody taking this at one of the conventions. So enjoy or don't. I don't enjoy. It. It's, it's very 90s. <laughs> yeah, there's little comments in it too, and yeah, I'm laughing. laughing. Feel free to join in. <laughs>
it just goes on from there, so if you want to stop it there, Mark, that's fine. Anyway, that's just the introduction song for the for the sense here. One of the many, many, many songs that they have. Alright, uh, the last one is from Sailor Stars. This is the last episode. Oh, the sad story, that's right, thank you. The lady, the girl that was playing um, the Sailor Moon in that one, her name is, uh, oh my gosh, I can't remember. Um, uh, no, Cafe? this was Marina Kiboki. No, Marina is fine. She's still alive. Yeah, I know, but it's not the one. Oh, that was, that was, uh, that was, uh, what's my name? Miyuki Kambi. Yeah. Miyuki yeah. was in the Dracula. Uh, this is not Miyuki Kambi. This is Marina Kambi. Are you sure? Because I thought Miyuki yes, did I all saw, the Draculas. I, I was in Japan. I was in Japan okay. for that musical. One of the same yeah, voice actors. Yeah, the one from the Dracula musicals. Um, uh, Miyuki, she had a heart problem. And she passed away at the age of 21. Wow. Just after leaving the musicals. So that was very sad. Um, the first Sailor Moon voice, or actress for the musicals went from 1993 to 1998, Oyama Anza. She's now in a heavy metal band. <laughs> 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 it's called Headphones President. Uh, then there was Fumi Nahara, she was the second one, and then Kanbe Miyuki, and then Marina um, Kuroki. She played Sailor Moon up until the end of 2005. So uh, if you ever get the chance to look at the musicals, they have them on YouTube. You can buy them sometimes online, but they are very expensive. So just to let you know. Okay, um, also there's a tie-in between the musicals and the live action. Does anybody know what it is? Um, yeah. Tell us. We're terrible fans. <laughs> <laughs> the actress who played Sailor Mercury uh, towards the end of the Sailor or the Dracula musicals and in Sailor Moon R musicals also played Naru Chan in the live action series. So, Useless yeah. knowledge. <laughs> okay, so for those, how many of you have seen Sailor Stars? <laughs> This is the very last battle from the very last episode in San Luis. The, the final episode. The final episode. The, the final battle. Um, so it's, it's just I couldn't control the whole thing. Um, there's a bit of nudity in it, like I said. No, not that one. Not that one. It's that one. So like I said, there is a little bit of nudity. So I can't let's go on.
Yeah. Well, most of the, the, the musicals are three hours long. So this was just one song. Wow. She's over there. Thank you guys all for coming out. And uh, your support has been incredible. And I uh, can't wait to talk to all of you and, and see you guys around. Thank you. Okay, so. I will go on this side and we're going to take your questions as you put up your hands. We'll give you the mic here to talk and we'll have the voice actors um, respond to your questions. So if you can keep them Sailor Moon related, um, you know, a couple that aren't, that would, you know, that would be fine. But I'm sorry, I just got to go downstairs. And, uh, so put up your hands if you have questions. I got to go this side. So. We'll start over here. Okay. So who's first? Hi, well, my name is Clem, um, and I really love Sailor Moon because my name meant the Moon Princess, really, literally. So my question for you is: Excuse you, me, can we? We just can't see where you are. Okay, thank you. So my question for you is: What did you like the most about doing voicing for this uh, anime? to work with is that the series is meaningful to me and I hope to some others because I think it gave uh, girls a voice. I think it was one of the gateway series that allowed girls to have a superhero, um, uh, a female uh, heroine who could fight the megaverse, who could speak up, who could be empowered and traditionally most of those kinds of roles have been given to boys or men. So it was one of the first ones where there was a female heroine who little girls could look up to and could feel inspired by and somebody who set out to fight the megaverse and who dealt with her own foibles and her own imperfections and who was able to form close relationships with other girlfriends and together in unison they could really do something that made a difference in the world. And I hope that message was relayed through the scripts and the directing and the acting and the producing. And that's why this experience has been meaningful to me. Okay, let's take one from this side over here. First, I gotta say I love you guys. Sailor Jupiter was always my favorite. Woo! <laughs> Woo! If you guys had to voice another character, what would be a different character that you would want to voice on the show? Oh, on the show? Yeah, on the show. Yeah, like on the show. We all wanted to do Sailor Moon. <laughs> 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 no, I'm, I'm, I'm making a joke, but first of all, when, uh, when the auditions first took place, of course, uh, the, the only part that we were reading for was Sailor Moon. So, the, you know, half of Toronto was there. Does that include the guys, too? <laughs> you know, times weren't quite as open as they are yeah. today, Jim. You, yeah. <laughs> you could have been there today, but yeah. you know, in, in those days, you know, then everybody thought, well, we should, she should be um, you know, obviously very spunky and have a really nice sort of personality in her voice, etc., to match the visual of Sailor Moon. So we all really, really wanted to be Sailor Moon because this was, as Terry said, this was a, a really unusual situation. This girl was the hero. And we never, none of the, the women had ever seen anything like her. We were all girls too. We hadn't seen anything like this. So we really desperately wanted to be Sailor Moon. And then when we got the calls from our agents, <laughs> their agents would say, well, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. <laughs> What's the good news? Well, the bad news is you didn't get Sailor Moon. And so we all, except, well, now I'll, I'll pass it over to Katie because apparently she didn't want to be Sailor Moon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was fine with Sailor Mars. I always thought Sailor Mars rocked, but I, um, I like the same. But we were, yeah, the same agency. So it was we all auditioned for Sailor Moon. But as a series, Sailor Mars was my very first voice um, job, really. So uh, so she is very special. But beyond all that, I wanted to be a bad guy. I don't know how you got that, Vince, but I wanted to be. Yeah. 
Yeah. I spoke up. Yeah. I'm not to play a bad guy ever, so. I threatened to walk off. But, but yeah, the bad guys were awesome. So, I mean, good guys were better. <laughs> No, no, it would have been fun. <laughs> uh, I was pretty happy with uh, Artemis. I'm not sure who else I auditioned for. I, I, I did a lot of different characters throughout the series, but a lot of them were just one-offs, just kind of, you know, shopkeepers and store owners and a few bad guys. But Artemis uh, started kind of with a very low-key voice. I'm being a little redundant from yesterday's session, but uh, there's uh, um, a show called Moonlighting with Bruce Willis and Sybil Shepherd at the time, and they wanted that Bruce Willis really cool, low, voice, hey Luna, how you doing? And it was just kind of really low. And then after a while, it kind of got a little uh, uh, more hyper and everything like that. But he, uh, they kind of uh, just allowed me to use my voice and kind of play with it. And I don't remember, I don't think I auditioned for Tuxedo Mask or a few other ones, but that would have been cool to play. So that might have been my other one. We could have switched. I actually yeah. never auditioned for Tuxedo Mask. You didn't even audition at <laughs> all. No. I never auditioned because I had done Alan, and then when they uh, decided they wanted to replace, they just, uh, it was uh, Roman Parliament that I think remember Roman and stuff, yeah, that started it. And then uh, yeah, they, just, they just called and they were like, did you want to do it? Absolutely. <laughs> After, uh, it was Reno Reno, Reno, Reno. Reno was the, did 11, the first 11, then Toby Proctor did, uh, I can't remember how many he did, and then I, I came in after that. Yeah. Uh, for me, um, uh, being in the minority in the show for male characters, <laughs> I actually love that. I thought that was very cool because you know, growing up it was like you guys were saying, you know, it was always you know male-based superheroes, and most shows were uh, dominated by male characters, especially in superheroes. And I was, I thought it was incredible that uh, that you know this show, you know, not just a single female, but multiple characters. Um, you know, three-dimensional, they had, you know, they were dealing with regular lives and then becoming superheroes and trying to save the world, and it just, I found it really an amazing show, and it, you know, what it's, what it's done, how it changed the, the genre, and uh, I was so impressed because I think ultimately the hardest thing is to always change the mind of producers in Hollywood with the money, and uh, they, it was the first time that I think Hollywood North America realized you could make a lot of money <laughs> by creating superheroes from women. And uh, I think that was a, a huge influence. And now, well, I look at today, 15 years later, 20 years later, you know, it's, uh, that was impressive. Um, for me, I don't know what the character I would want to play in the show. Um, I suppose I'd play maybe one in Santa Moon. That's how the rich were like, this is Doubtfire. <laughs> younger voice and that younger energy was so fun to play and getting into, you know, all of her adorable little mischievous ways was always so, so fun for me. But I think that if I could play another character, it would probably be Tuxedo Mask. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I could have rocked that character. <laughs> and if they were auditioning, you might not have the part. It might have been me. So, Trigger, how, you would, never know. how would you have voiced him? Can you give us something time? I would have made him like real low. Uh, hey, hey, Serena. I'm gonna make you some cookies. Love you, sugar. I just wanted to add something a little segue to that question, but I wanted to uh, give a shout out to two other fine actors who shared the role of Sailor Moon: Trace Moore and Linda Valentine. So my story is a little bit different than yours because I didn't, I wasn't one of those Toronto actors who originally auditioned for Sailor Moon. I think it must have been in LA or something. But when I was back in Toronto, I got a call from my agent one day. Tracy Moore had started the series. I think she did maybe six episodes. And there were some artistic differences um, there. So they were looking for somebody to take on the role of Sailor Moon. And I got a last minute call. So I went in and auditioned. And normally when you audition for something, you have a few weeks notice, you know, you know you're going to be working on it in the near future, you sort of plan your life. I went in about 3 o'clock in the afternoon and he said, great, you have the part, can you start tonight? 
<laughs> so I, I think I started it, Ron was saying, or, or Sugarland was saying, we did some midnight sessions. It was a crazy schedule. Um, so that's how I started. It was fast and furious and a lot of fun. And I enjoyed it thoroughly for many episodes and I think the three movies. And then I became pregnant with my two amazing children who are sitting in the back there. And